so what I noticed to get this started, right, I need to lock the throttle all the way open so there's a position in the throttle. You can lock it for uh, so you keep on turning. So you want to do that. And that gives me just enough air passage to uh, get this thing started. See what I mean? All right, so I think it's safe to say that we get a we can add some fuel and get. So I poured fuel in it, but I'm not sure why this happened. Uh, it uh, just I didn't even hit the primer bulb. It just started flooding where the uh, air filter is. So I cleaned it up, and uh, now we're gonna try again. Let's see what happens. I'm not going to hit the primer, I just want to see what's going to happen. Put the throttle all the way locked down. Right, let's put some fuel in the primer. Choke open. Close it all the way up. Let's see what the spark plug status is. Engine's a little flooded. Not too bad, but you can see right here also something's leaking. Looks like it's pissing something out the bottom. Oh, it's in the front right here. That's not good. <laughs> What's that about? Ugh. Might be leaking at the bottom of the engine. Do you see what I mean about engine flooding? Uh, 
Uh, I'm not even sure why so much fuel is coming out. Not a carburetor? Oh no, it's a fuel line. It's just uh, but unless the carburetor is not sealing, but that's a little dicey because the carburetor itself is actually a pressure test of it. And uh, this mess right here, fuel came from right in front here. So I need to see if the engine is just not seeing. So this is, uh, I took the muffler off so we can get a better idea what's happening in here. Let's see. Okay, so what do we have? We have a lot of fuel. It's a lot of fuel right here, right? It looks like it's engines getting flooded, right? Because the uh oh, you're kinda like in my way. Alright. So the gas this here it doesn't look like it's leaking from the bottom. That's what I'm saying. Because it's already it's higher. Right? There's the back of the you can see right here, here's the back of the muffler. You can see there's a whole lot of fuel in the back of it, right? So it wouldn't if the muffler sat like that that fuel there couldn't come from it has to come from someplace higher so it couldn't be from there so it's gonna be someplace else up here i wonder if the cylinder head is actually cracked that's a possibility all right if you look real close you can see right here Right there, the light's a little harsh. But that dark spot right there, that's that's actually fuel. So it, it dripped around this uh, heat sink right here. Uh, let's, let's clean it off. Alright. And then uh, if you look at the heat sink itself, you can see right there. So it's a little wet at the bottom. And it's dry at the top. Dry at the top. Kind of wet at the bottom. So you can, it's absolute, it's obvious that it's uh engine's getting flooded. And it's just pouring out of the um, exhaust. So I am a little... The carburetor has got to be the issue at this point. You know, either I have the lines on wrong. I have to just double check. Or the carburetor itself is just no good. I think I got a plan. So, remember the very first sacrificial saw that we got? Yeah, because we have two, right? Uh, okay, so uh, let me just uh, back up a little bit. <laughs> Maybe I did already. Okay, let's try this. Okay, so this is the air filter for this saw. It's a little bit, it's a one year older than the sacrificial saw. The sacrificial saw, I think, is from 1998. This one looks like it was produced in, no, sorry, 1999. Then this one was produced in 1998, I believe. Now, this is what happened. This is the air filter housing, right? I want you to look at something here. Okay, you see this bottom part here? On this generation, right, they took the throttle linkage and, and, and they placed it as a, all the way through. This is the newer carburetor that they ended, ended up using, right? And that linkage goes to right here. So, like that on this carburetor. Now this carburetor is the only carburetor you can get to replace the carburetor that's originally on here. 
Here's the problem. You see this big gnarly piece right here? It doesn't fit. Right? See this here? It doesn't fit. So I want to flip this over so I can show you what they did. Right? So right here, they open up the space a lot more versus the older one. So this here can have some sp some space to move. Like that. I mean, so this can sit in here, the the, uh, the choke that is, right? Now, I was just gonna cut this right off and stay it in there. I don't need to. I can just use this old um, air filter. I'm sorry, the air filter housing from the other sacrificial saw, because it seems to be the same form factor for the filter, and uh, this doesn't impede uh, it sitting properly. So let's get this carburetor, which is a better carburetor, right? And put that in there. It's a little different because, you know, you'll see. So, just watch and enjoy it. I'm not going to change too many, give you too many new angles because it's nothing too complicated you can't figure out from what I've done already. Okay, so we're going to, we'll, we'll, we'll put that aside. Alright, let's, uh, This is going to be the fuel in this top this top part here, and this will be the one that goes from the uh, primer bulb. So we're going to have to do a lot of little things. Okay, so let's um, let's try to dump whatever remaining fuel in here, if it's possible, to get it all the way out. I did replace that because that bulb, the check valve just broke off. So, okay. Alright, let's do this. So, pull this off here. I'm sorry, I didn't get to show you. Like, I did dry test this to see if it fits. Alright, so, you're going to want to do that if you're going to before you do anything else, just to make sure. You can tell it fits. Right, but you see it, uh... Vicious. Okay, you see what I'm doing? I'll bring it back when I get it all together. So it kind of got this together, kind of. And so that's all. We're 
of the throttle will work. Now this is just still a little bit too long, so we had to cut some more off of that. All right, here we go. So my challenge now, I gotta get this here under the cable like this. Slid up. So let's just check the path again of that. That wants to go down like that, right? So we gotta get this here. You can't see, I know. Uh, just for a few seconds. Okay, so all I did was uh, slide the carburetor forwards just to give me a little more room. And then uh, kind of push that on. Okay, good. So now we don't have anything really in the way. Oops, we do push that down. Okay. Okay, so we have nothing stopping us from going full wide open. Okay, good. All right, what are we thinking? Let's see if this filter cover goes on. This is again, this is the uh, filter cover from the newer Craftsman. It has an extra space here, so this can sit without too much contest. That's for the choke, the extra space. Let's see what happens. Yep, that works. That absolutely works. Okay. So we know that'll work, right? Alright. Let me get this grommet off. Put that on there. And before we go any further, Let's just uh, pour some fuel in it and uh, see what, uh, see how it behaves. It's a really good thing they didn't really change these designs that much because I was, uh, I was in a bit of a bind. But you know what I just learned though? It's, uh, if you feel like you know that the size is the same. You know, you should be able, if you're running into problems, you can probably just do a test by getting the part from that generation or just look at the part itself and see what's different about it and see if it already has the space that you need. You know, I was, uh, this is a really good example for me, for life lesson that is, like, uh, Sometimes you need to step away from the project. And your clear heads will prevail. So. See fuel there, I don't know where that's from. Let's take a look and see uh, what kind of um, see if it leaks anywhere. Just oh yeah, well, it's just coming right out of that thing, isn't it? Jesus, what is going on? It is just pissing fuel right out of that carburetor, and I don't know why. This is the newer carb, too, so it's like extra strange. Mm -hmm. right. I am confused.
Yeah, let's see if you can see this strip. See that? It's just stripping at the, at the bottom of the carb right there. So I don't know. I'm going to pull this carb off and double check the uh, just pressure and see what, see what the step. So I got a new to me carb. And uh, I'm put that on and see uh, if it floods or not. Uh, this is a, sorry, not new to me. This is a new carburetor. This is the new to me carb from the old chainsaw. So let's switch it. All right. So we've got new fuel in it. And uh, I'm going to hit the primer bulb and see what happens. Yeah? So we'll take a look right there. Oh no. Looks like the same thing's happening. Alright, that is not good. <laughs> That's not good, is it? I do not know what's happening here. Hmm. Three carburetors all doing the same thing. Alright, I'm at a loss. Okay, so I have a couple of theories. Alright, I double checked the fuel lines. Everything is routed correctly. And uh, my last, uh, well, at least one place I'm going to go, one direction I'm going to chase is this, these caps, right? So this is the original cap, you know, the, uh, the retainer like thing that's plastic that was in there, you know, uh, that broke off. Right. This one's really hard to get in there. You know, you, you know, you might have seen me try to put in. I'll show you. But you gotta like jam it in there and really turn. You know, so it's a, it's difficult. This is from sacrificial saw number two, the Poland. Right. Now it's a little hard to see, but there is a small vent hole right here, and that the the, the it allows the air pressure to like escape and keep the gas in there. So it's like a check valve fluid, even though air is a fluid. Um, but you can see how that just kind of turns like that, right? I'm thinking we should probably try to like put some fuel in there and see uh, see if it still behaves the same. And I'll pump it, since the primer bulb gives, sets pressure, you know, in the system, let's try to pump it one time, see what happens, if it starts bleeding out fuel or not. Pour a little bit in. Alright, so usually what I what happens right now is I hear a lot of hissing. As in there's pressure it gets built up and it's just hissing. I can tell you right away it's not hissing right now. Right. So what does that mean? Well, let's take a look and see if it uh, bleeds fuel out of there. All right, so that's one pump. I'm just gonna watch it for a little bit. It's, it's pretty stable. Primer bulb has fuel in it. How about two pumps? That looks good. No leaking. All right, I want to see if fuel will get all the way pushed back through the primer and back into the tank. Oh, right there. Third pump did it. Okay, so I have a feeling that you can only prime this with so many times before pressure gets too high and it exceeds what's cap what what that what that's capable of doing. 
So let's, uh, I'm going to dump this fuel back out. Actually, I could probably just open this up. There we go. So if I open that up, right, the pressure should be lower. No, it still, it still bleeds in. Yeah, yeah, still, the pressure is still high inside of the chambers of the, uh, Carburetor. All right, so let's uh, let's pour the fuel out of this, and uh, we'll do it again. Empty that out, and uh, I should be able to test it. Probably just do like one. Let's take a look at the. Um, I pull this apart. So wanna just trying to see what's going on. You know, uh, we have. So I did do a compression test, and I got to 121. That's pretty high. But I want to show you something that I found when I pull it apart. If you look at the uh, bottom here, on this side, this is the side where the chain saw, where the chain is, the chain and bar. See how dry that is? And you look at this side, right? This is the side with the um, magneto. And uh, you can see right here that it's a little wet. So I think this gasket here it's not sealing correctly with the bottom part of the engine. And uh, I think this is uh, one of the reasons why it cannot stay started once it gets started. So we're going to try and see what we can do to try to resolve this. Well, let's talk about a couple things I want to do today. <clears throat> I'm going to try to disassemble this spark plug. Right? The reason why I'm doing this, I need to make a... Um, Oh, I need to have an attachment, find and make an attachment that I can smoke test and pressure test a small engine. Now I, I'm not a machinist, I wish I was, I wish I had the hardware, but what I would do would just make this, you know. So I try to get this from the um, store, and uh, it almost fits, it's a quarter inch here, and uh, I think, I don't know if it's three-eighths or something like that, but either way, right, I got it from the, uh, gas, uh, you know, plumbing supply store, and the problem with this is that all these things are American standard, they're not, uh, metric. This spark plug thread pitch here is metric. That's metric. This is American standard. Now, they fit close, you know, you can, you can get this screwed in, but then it kind of, uh, can feel it starting to get a little weird. So this is the kind of hose, this is the exact hose, I'm sorry, I need to put on top of this. Now you can see it fits really nicely here. This is for my smoke test machine. Now I want to do the same thing. I thought maybe if I can take the inner electrode out of a spark plug, I can probably like just kind of like do something like this. Let's see. So let's try to disassemble this spark plug. Now spark plugs in general, uh, all this is like pressure fitted, and this is the inner. This is the inner um, electrode. Now, I want to try to get this out. So I don't know how it's possible and maintain and keep this in place. This uh, porcelain. If that doesn't work, right? My other plan of action will be just try to like get this out as much as I can and then maybe like glue that on top. If I had a welder I'd just weld it but I can't. I don't have a welder. So let's just try and see what we can do. So I believe this top part of the electrode is uh, probably just screwed on. Maybe we can just unscrew this part. Definitely spins. That's good. Okay, so that's that. Let's see the inside of that. Looks like that might come out, but I'm not sure which direction. Be downwards. I think we should cut that off. 
just a tab at the top. I wonder if we can just kind of tap it, tap it out, you know? It's kind of curious. It's pretty small. So I know that this is electro welded into uh, onto the, uh, the bottom part there. Just not really sure how tight of a fit this is. Hit it a couple more times. Yeah, no, it's not moving. I don't want to damage the porcelain. Something collapsed. Now let me heat this up and see what we can get. Maybe try tapping on this side. Let's see what happens. Yep, that's going down. Okay, that might be the way to go. It looks like this center part here wants to move. Maybe with a... So 
it as a center electrode. That, that moved, so that might slide right out. We just need a little passage. If we can get a passage, then... Oh yeah, that's moving. So it shattered a little bit of the porcelain that was in the middle. Okay, so that's good. That's a good sign. Maybe we can pull that out. Just like this. Again, I don't want to damage the porcelain because I'm going to use that to. Uh, That was easy. Right, prepare for war. See, so, yeah, that's the inner part of the uh, spark, spark lug, the inner, electro inner electrode. Okay, so that was pretty easy to come out. So that's good. Now we have, you can see, there's a hollow. You can see all the way through. We have perfectly fine open chamber now we can attach smoke and pressure to and conduct the test. Let me just clean this off and we'll call it a quick. So we get it seal seal this up a little bit, alright? So we're gonna use an uh, old bicycle tire, hopefully the parts where we cut is not the part with the holes. <laughs> that would be a little Whatever reason why this tire failed, right? We don't want to, don't want that to be the reason why our smoke test fails. So I'm just gonna try to eyeball it. We need to just seal that part, right? And uh, this side over here. I'm just gonna make a hole. Try to squeeze the bolt through those. Just like that. X would ensure a nice. Okay, alright, so that should work. Yeah, there's a hole there. There's a hole there. Alright, let's uh, kind of button it back up together and then we'll uh, cut. Just gotta do a little bit of a. Hanging the, <laughs> the line all the way around, so that's what it looks like. A little bit of air. It's kind of pushed as a smoke. All right, so now the line's all full. Right, let's go put this back on. It's not exactly the nicest of odors. It's mineral spirits. I'm using cutting board oil. Sorry, cutting board oil would be the best way to describe it. To uh, generate smoke. This is what I'm using. Works really well. It's not mineral spirits, just to remember. Okay, so let's give it a shot. Let's see what we got.
I'm thinking this is not getting any air to the uh, smoke what's happening is this is so pressurized right now that smoke can't even get to it so I mean that's a good sign you know yeah there's no smoke getting into the engine I'm sorry there's no smoke escaping from this so this indicates to me we've got a a good seal. Alright, I'm happy with what I see. So again, we're checking the uh, crankcase. Now remember, the, the piston is at bottom set, bottom dead center. So it's at the very, very bottom. Because I need to check and see if I'm getting any leakage from, bottom, from here, the bottom of the cylinder. Now the reason why it's important to check that, because it needs this impulse to keep fuel coming in. Right, so this is a good sign right here that this is uh, nice and sealed. We're not getting any leakage. Yep. Okay, so we got a good. Actually, want to conduct a test. I'm gonna just want to verify something, right? Let's take the uh, let's take the muffler off. test, smoke test of this, just to see if what we saw was a really good seal. I took that off on the muffler side. You can see uh, there's all the smoke coming out. That's the only location the smoke's coming out. So I'm pretty sure we get ourselves a good seal. Yep, that's the only place. Okay, I just want to double check and make sure that the uh, we weren't getting any false positives. And that, that was sealed properly, and that was sealed properly. Okay.